So when yeah. you look at a play, you it sounds to me you are looking for a central, I don't want to say point, I don't want to say idea, metaphor, I want to say perception, metaphor, really. but there's yeah. something in there. The same as on a canvas, a good canvas, there's always one point, doesn't have to be defined, but actually sources everything in a way. And it's co like a coin flipping, it's constantly changing sides, meaning new me give new meaning. Its evolution tells a story. So the evolution of? In forest, we had the window. Sometimes right. we're on the inside of the window. Sometimes we're in the outside of the window. We changed where it rained, where it snowed. Where and there was a lot of weather in forest, which is why opening the side door was so beautiful. The right. weather of that was unbelievable. The sunny day pouring in, and and for nighttime shows, I just want to get a giant cleave and blast light through, uh, because I just want to feel real weather versus the weather that the theater had been creating. There was fog. There was. And we, but we took the window and we constantly flipped sides. So sometimes we were in the hospital yep. looking from the inside at people in the hospital. Sometimes we saw a character lying behind a window in a hospital in an ICU unit, unit. And that window became everything. It constantly changed and evolved, but it was always l looking through in a sense that was, to my mind, the two people trying to look through the past in the photograph. And then you get a photograph, and she's looking at the photograph of her mother and family. That's what she has. All that she has left is a photograph of the, the group, you know, uh, the group that's the resistance group. And she thinks that's her mother, and she's looking at the photograph. We did the photograph behind the window, right? Um, so uh, now I want the same subject, but yeah. I want to swing around it here. Mm -hmm. Where does Richard Rose then stand in the fact that everything you're telling me now about listening to a story, where the actors are, where the space is, is non-literal, is to go beyond the literal, to go for look the layers underneath. And yet the world outside in 2014 is the most literal in terms of entertainment, media, storytelling. We've never lived in a more literal, you know, yes. digital creation of 400,000 orcs that I can see in yeah. a movie of Lord of the Rings, and I don't want to yeah. be asked to imagine, I'm going to be told it. That popular narrative has never been more literal and more dead in my opinion mm. but more literal and there you are driving the opposite direction in a 233 space here north of the railway Maybe tracks that's why you need theater i mean just to be go against the grain you know theater is a very small art form 230 seats uh it's a very local art form uh, but i think there's a desperation on the part of many people to uh, f for the very reason you're saying, uh, to employ their imagination. Uh, it's like listening to classical music. And of course, every time you listen to classical music, this is what I do. I, I hear stories. I make up stories. I've mm. done it all my life as a child, listening to classical music. And wherever Beethoven took me, I, took, I went. And nothing literal. I just followed the story that seemed to be in the music in my imagination. And I think you're, in a way, asking your audience to do the same thing when you say, do this. Imagine this. You will make up the rest of the picture. You will create the pit. You will create the home, the period home, the library that you're in, uh, the, uh, 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 the meaning of the photograph, the characters in the photograph. The audience will f follow along. And I think that forces them to, for lack of a better term, fall into the play because they're filling in and it causes them to lean forward and when you have, unlike any other medium, when you have that many people, 200 people, gather in a dark room, make the commitment to come to the theater, uh, pay for the babysitter, whatever, right? Park, take the time, because it takes a long time, actually, the, the whole process of getting to the theater. It takes a lot more time than just the, the show itself. You get the ticket, get in, sit down, and turn off the lights, <coughs> and be in a room with strangers, um, which is, can be strange, you know. When someone takes off their clothes on stage and in a room with 200 strangers, it's everybody in the room knows <laughs> that we're in a room with another person who's just taken off their clothes. It can be funny, it can be mm -hmm. whatever, but everybody's aware that the person beside that or something highly sexual happens in the, sta in the stage. Everybody's in the room watching the same sex act. It's not like you're at home on the internet, you know, looking at your porn videos, right? You're very conscious of everybody in the room participating. You have no privacy. You have no privacy, and you must be utterly engaging every moment. 
uh, which is p part of employing the audience's imagination, be utterly engaging because uh, they they need to be to, to be quiet for two hours and focus and concentrate. They're seeing everything. You can't be obvious because if you're obvious, um, they'll be bored. If the text isn't rich enough, they'll be bored. At least the theater that I'm interested in. The theater that you're yeah, interested yeah, in, yeah, yes. Right. You know, there's, there's other people doing other kinds of theater, and that too might be good. But I really, you know, I'm a bit of a, you know, I've did many plays Are by Howard Parker. No, I'm a bit, a bit plays by Howard Parker, and I don't think there's anybody in the mass. Nobody thinks in the mass. Not everybody laughs at the same joke. Everybody's play, every experience of the play is individual. Um, occasionally, sometimes there's a, a joyous moment of everybody laughing together, or, or two thirds of the audience, or 50% of the audience. Um, uh, because everybody's having an individual experience and identifying with that experience in that moment of the laugh. Now, you want as many people to laugh as possible, yes, but not everybody will. It's impossible to get that, and uh, you shouldn't ex in a way expect it. I think. Um, but yeah, maybe I'm going, going against the grain of whatever mass entertainment. That's a, you know, uh, so in people the, in are rarefied who come to the theater. People are rare. They're, it's a rare art form in a sense. Uh, uh, if we were the only art form, as we once used to be, that was kind of public t storytelling, uh, we might find ourselves going to a more mm, s evident mm, form of storytelling. But then when you do a Shakespeare and you think, okay, that's the only entertainment in town, and you see the complexity of his plays, you know that all his people can take his plays on the literal level, on the profane level, or they can look at his place as highly intellectual, or the search for identity of the human condition in its time, or the complexity of a whole society engaged. They're rich plays, obviously. 